What did you do for a career? I love all my bags. <laughs> but two that come to my mind. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I am here with my sister Hi. and you're seeing her for the first time. <laughs> I'm tired of the masks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is a Q&A video and I've asked you guys through a community post and through Instagram if you had any questions. So these are the questions that I recently got from you guys as well as some of the questions that I didn't get to last time we had a Q&A. So there's, there's a lot. So um, let's just go through it. Here we go. Oh, by the way, if you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. I'd love it if you take a little bit of your time, if you like this kind of video, to click the subscribe button and the bell notification. I do videos about once a week. Anyway, back to the questions. Here we go. Bags and bunnies. What bags in your collection do you simultaneously love and hate? So now, just for clarity, I know you haven't really studied any of these questions. So you're yeah, I'm going to answer cold. <laughs> On the fly. So, so I'll get my honest opinions. Yes. So what do you think? <laughs> so I love all my bags. If I didn't love them, I wouldn't keep them. Mm. But I will say there are aspects of certain bags that I don't love. Mm -hmm. So for example, my boy bag with top handle, I got the large size. It's, it was the new medium. And now I think they call it the large. And I wish it was a little bit smaller. Both that bag and my Lady Dior that has all that has the matte black studs all over it mm. are very heavy. So mm. that aspect of those two bags I don't love. But, when but you, I love my bag. I love the look of them. When you when you wear it, do you just go, oh, I just want to take it off because it's okay. No, no, but I wouldn't carry that either of those bags for like an all day excursion mm. or something. Right. But if I'm gonna run a quick errand or something like that, I love the way they look. They're right. both super edgy, kind of, you know great kind of masculine trendier bags that I love the styling you you mentioned two bags that it's on my on my channel so mm -hmm. I'll link those two videos that she her unboxings of that in the description box for me I actually thought about this because initially I'm like I love all my bags <laughs> but two that come to my mind is Petit Noé which I got it because I wanted to be cool because I saw this young girl wearing, carrying a petit noe and it was all beat up and I wanted it to be beat up, but I got a little stain on the bottom. I'm neurotic about it. I'm like, oh my God, I got a little stain. And um, So you know when you love something on somebody else and you're like, oh, I love that look, but you have to be honest with yourself. Is that really no, my that's look? No, not me. <laughs> that's not me. I'm not that cool. Um, and it's, it fits a lot, which is great, mm -hmm. but it's got a really wide width, oh, depth. Right, so, so when it I'm sticks wearing out from it, your body. yeah, it does stick out. And it, if I'm like, I was shopping recently, and I was carrying that, and it was like sort of hitting like the, there's somebody else standing in between me and the clothes rack, and I felt like I had sort of. So I'm, I'm like, ah, oh, it's, it's too wide. I feel like it feels like Do it's too wide. Do you feel that way about your? Uh, what's the Hermes orange bag? Oh, the toolbox. No, toolbox. it's it's narrower. Oh, because the I size think of those, is small. Like in my head, yeah, they're both I imagine boxy. them boxy. Yeah, bags. they're both boxy bags. They're both square, sort of boxy, kind of bucket looking bags. But the Patinoe is bigger, wider, and it's much wider. Okay. Yeah, so I don't hit other people with with the, the toolbox, toolbox mm -hmm. but I do hit. I feel like I almost hit other people with my Patinoe. So mm -hmm. that irritates me. Anything and else? so, uh, yeah, uh, reissue. 226 <laughs> and that is the I mean I love I love the reissue style but that square class mm -hmm. and I mentioned this before too it's like I can't seem to get it just you don't so have the mademoiselle it. closure has like a little rectangular thing and then a rectangular frame around the flap so you have to stick it in you know it's like those peg you know yeah. games that you used to play not as very a kid. good at those and you just need to line it up, and it goes right in, and then you turn the closure. You don't have any problem. I don't have any problem with yeah, it. Yeah, she's but, got the two. But two, there are two, other two. people who have mentioned that, too. Yeah, Irene. From, yeah. yeah, Irene mentioned it. Yes, sister. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next question. Is that Speedy 20 Girl? If you had to choose one brand to buy from for the rest of your life, what would that brand be? So hmm. I can kind of cheat this question, because I, if that means... I can keep all the bags I currently have and then just forward going, I'm only buying one brand. Ah. That hmm. makes it an easier question for me. I would just say Hermes. I don't think that's what she meant, but okay. If that's not what she meant. if her, her, Okay, her, well, let's her, answer it two ways. Okay. So, so that way, I would say going forward, I would just say Hermes because I think the quality is beautiful. It kind of, 
in the scheme of the luxury world, those bags I think are made in such a way that they merit their price. Whereas I feel like other luxury brands. Uh, if the intended question was, you only have one luxury brand mm -hmm. for your entire collection, what would it be? I would still probably say Hermes. Really? Yeah. Not me. So I would say if it was what I have and going forward, mm -hmm. what it would be Hermes. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. I love I love the leather and I feel like it's more durable than my Chanel's. I'm, I'm more nervous about my Chanel's. Okay. The and other is if I could just have one uh, brand, I would say Louis Vuitton only because I think the canvas, especially the canvas is super durable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, and even my, yeah, here we go. We're going to do a review <laughs> of this. Even like my Speedy 20 and Emprunt leather, that mm -hmm. Emprunt leather feels more, much more Very robust, robust mm -hmm. than my caviar's cause Chanel. I don't know why I feel that way. Okay. Yeah, I'm more nervous with the Chanel's. Maybe it's the structure of the Chanel Maybe. Bags. Maybe. Yeah. I don't maybe. know. Yeah. I mean, but I will say I feel like the Capucine leather that I have. Oh, super durable. Feels very durable. Yeah. So durable. I agree with you on that sense. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's it. So that's the way we'll answer mm. it. <laughs> uh, this is Danio. One. Is Christina your biggest YouTube fan, Maggie? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. You always watch her. I always watch her videos. If, if she hasn't commented, I will call her. <laughs> and I say, have what you seen? What do you seen? think of what this video? <laughs> so you're, you're my biggest fan. And I make you my biggest fan because I remind you. Did you see this video? <laughs> Have you watched it? What do you think? <laughs> Who are your favorite Lux YouTubers and why? That's a really hard question because I do watch a handful of people. I don't watch a lot. Um, I really like those folks who delve into the reviews, you know, the pros and cons, you know, how someone might have found great deals. Um, mm. Like Kim. Yeah. Irene. They do uh, evaluations. Oh, which Kim Kroon from KK, KK loves, loves this. I love her. So, mm -hmm. like, I watch those kinds of videos. I really do not watch unboxings. I do not watch vloggers. I do not watch, generally speaking, I mean, there in might the be... Lux, in the because you the watch Lux. other genres. Right, but I think in that, in this luxury community, I don't watch the vast majority mm. of the kinds of videos a lot of people put out. Mm. Um, big hauls. Not interested because no. that's not my life. So why would I? I don't Watch see a value else. to me of watching that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess living vicariously through someone that no, can it be makes fun. me jealous. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah, I would say Irene yeah. and Kim. Hmm. I I watch some um, unboxings. Um, what's her name? Snow seven seven seven. Oh yeah yeah. I love uh -huh. her, uh -huh. and and she does a lot of unboxing. But I like her. Okay. So, so I watch That's her. Fair. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, but like the bigger YouTubers that uh -huh. do huge hauls yeah. after, I it's not appealing to me. What I might do, because I'm just curious, I'm nosy, so I might just fast forward like I go zoop. And see what, see what was what open. Got. Yeah, what was open. <laughs> yeah, you got that, 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 that. Um, and then... Oh, what, I will say there's one other person. Um, Cranley Place. Oh, yes. She's I love good. her videos. She does all these really in-depth how to tie Hermes scarves, how does she stores them, all the different, you know, kind of new designs coming out. I'm yeah, like obsessed with her channel. She does a lot of research. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like I'm getting a history lesson yeah, sometimes. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. She's very good. <laughs> She's very good. And um loves YouTubers. I have I have I love so many. Yeah, you've YouTubers been in this community. Because I've been longer. in this community for a long time. But I have to say I like Andri, mm -hmm. I love her, mm -hmm. and I watch hers even though she doesn't do as many luxury anymore because I like her. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I'll watch her vlogs. But I think that's getting away from the question of which luxury YouTubers do you watch? LV Coffee, LV Coffee Lover, I love her personality. Irene, Kim, mm -hmm. the, the people that you mentioned. Yeah. Kat. Oh yeah, Sorry. I love Kat. <laughs> yep. Clara, Zila, uh -huh. okay. she's, I mean, so many. I mean, I feel like, I feel like I'm in a Academy you're, Awards. Yeah, you're like, I'm afraid of I'm forgetting, forgetting somebody. somebody. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the downside <laughs> yeah. of doing this Be on the Rachel. fly. <laughs> anyway, okay. Maxie's mommy. Hi, Maxie's mommy. Uh, how do you store your designer silk or cashmere shawls to protect them? So I have a little space in my nightstand by my bed. Um, where I basically just stack everything. I don't have a huge collection, so I don't feel the need to like put each one in a separate cubby or something like that. I think maybe in the future I might if I were more organized. But I do also make sure that I have cedar blocks um, that I sand at least, you know, I try to once a month so that 
you know, won't attract moths and things like that, things that could damage. But it's a dry um, area that has plenty of ventilation and that does not get any direct sunlight. Yeah, me too. No, in my closet, no direct sunlight. I hang a, things that I tend to wear. I just, I'm too lazy to fold it and put it back in, so I'll just hang it. Mm -hmm. But I do have like that jasmine pouch. Mm -hmm. Is it jasmine? That supposed to get the moth away oh okay yeah i got it on amazon i'll link it if i when i if i find but yeah. that's how you I don't store. want a mothy smell you don't want to yeah. put it in something enclosed so that it can get musty or we live in a relatively humid climate so we don't want you know humidity to affect it so you want it in an open enough space i think mm -hmm. um and again not in direct sunlight right okay next and believe what makes exotic leathers worse than calfskin and lamb leather worse than mm-hmm I don't think it's worth that. I Why? love my exotic leather bag, bags. Wait, I understand the concerns from the videos of exotics that PETA and other organizations have released. I am still confused why this is different than non-exotic leathers. Mm -hmm. I know some of these animals are used for food, but it's my understanding that those rate those rates for luxury leather hides are different than those raised for food production. I would love to hear from anyone who is knowledgeable on this topic. So those of you who are more knowledgeable than us, please comment below, but what do you think? So I think it may depend on the, the company from whom you're buying the luxury bags. So I have no idea how like Nancy Gonzalez she does a lot gets of her mm -hmm. exotic Exotics. leathers. I have no idea. I did do some research before I bought my Hermes Croc bag on how Hermes does it, and I felt very comfortable after reading in their annual report how they try to monitor and um, have very high standards of care for the, um, I think it's called abattoir, I'm probably saying that wrong, um, and their tanneries, and you know, you have to also keep in mind that um, these leathers, while you know they're beautiful and shiny and whatever, they're that way because they prevent these animals from like attacking each other and getting scarred on their hides. They try to keep them so that they're not fighting with each other. They have a lot of controls and they also go through and randomly audit. I, I know that there was one kind of expose that PETA had done on Hermes and Hermes shut that particular farm down and they really go through a lot of efforts to try to make sure that the animals are treated what about well. so if you're particularly interested in a particular brand i would highly recommend going through and try to all of their these companies have public filings so you can see how they talk about what their care measures are and how they maintain their standards and frankly I don't know that these companies do that for regular leather. Right, right. So I don't know I'm, if they're kept in little stalls like, you know, veal well, is. I have no idea. So I don't know why. Because well, even with calves, lambs, or any other Yeah, animals, lambskin. It depends on how skin. they're treated too. So I, I understand that, but I don't know when people, you know, point to exotics versus regular cow hides or lambskin or whatever, mm -hmm. why the focus is so sharply put on exotics versus all of these other leathers. I think, I think the false narrative maybe, and that's what I was thinking, is like you think of exotic, it's like, oh, these are so precious rare. Animals. Yeah, precious animals. They're farmed. Yeah, so they're not then catching if them they're in the endangered wild. and whatever, then you don't want to have anything to do with None of these luxury brands are going to catch these animals in the wild. The wild animals have scars all over their bodies. Mm. You would, they would never do that. Yeah, okay. So I hope we answered your question. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's finance, right? It's yeah. all money. So I read an article... Um, where they were saying, you think the leathers are a byproduct of meat industry, but it's not. They're both its own industry. Mm -hmm. So it could be coexisting industries. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, because of the, the demand for leather goods is so high, you don't have to wait for the meat product to come up with a leather product. Does that right. make sense? <laughs> yeah, so it's all economy. Uh, Oksana Elvi. Now, she did a video. I love Oksana. That's the other person. Oh, yeah. I love Oksana. Oksana. <laughs> She recently up uploaded a video about bags that she kept selling and rebuying. It's a good video. I re recommend you watch it. In fact, I'm going to link it below. Um, when I commented on our video and I, I asked if I could, oh, that's a great question because she asked, you know, what would you do? So I said, I'll answer that in my Q&A. <laughs> so what bags mm -hmm. do you think that you kept selling and rebuying and, and why? Do you I don't do that. 
Why? Why How do you do not that? do that? Do because you? I research to death before I buy something. Mm -hmm. And I also have a real aversion to selling. I mean, I have done it, but with the mail delivery system as poor as it is, even when you get things insured, they disappear for long periods yeah. of time. I've sold like even like an SLG that I was selling and it literally sat in my regional office for over a week oh. before it even left to go to the other state it was supposed to be delivered to. In the meantime, you're getting and emails I, from And the I paid fire. a premium for priority mail <laughs> for mm -hmm. that, and it just mm -hmm. sat here. Mm -hmm. So I get a lot of anxiety around the current state of delivery of packages and also all the scams that are out there. I'm really mm -hmm. afraid of being scammed. Well, you could also sell it to, like, a, you know, fashion file, we bags. Or yeah, so... Yugi's closet. Yes, and I am probably on the side of not selling things. Mm -hmm. So I've yet to experience a situation where I've sold something and then wanted to rebuy it. Oh, okay. I have. I've wanted to, but I'm much less research-driven than you are. <laughs> I've, but I didn't rebuy it, mainly mm. because I'm cheap. Because I sold it for such a good price, like a price that right. I can't buy it for now. Right. So I will pay more, and I'm just too cheap to buy it for more. And I'm like, Ugh. like it's the principle, principle of the thing. Of the thing. Like, it's the same thing. If I like, there are some bags that I saw at the Paris airport mm -hmm. several years ago yeah. when I was traveling, and I I could have bought it for like under three thousand. Now they're selling it in the resale market for six thousand. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, for on the principle of the fact that I could have got it for under three thousand, mm -hmm. I won't buy those bags. Right. But, you know. So then you're just missing out on those bags. But that really goes <laughs> to things. our personality versus liking yeah. a bag. Yeah, I love those bags. Right. Yeah. So um, I haven't done it, but I, I've been tempted many times. Mm -hmm. I sold that Chanel Jumbo, that pearlescent Chanel like Jumbo. Light gray. Light gray. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful. Mm -hmm. But it did have like little flaws, and I just could not see the flaws. Could not so, not see them. Could not not see them. So, <laughs> but I sold it. I will never be able to buy that for that price. Nor could I ever find it. BB812. Hi, Maggie. Really love your videos. Thank you. <laughs> if you can only choose one, will you choose bags or jewelry? And what's your next wish list item for that category? Mm. If I could only choose one. Mm. Okay. So for me, it's easier because I'm kind of at this weird period. I think I've got the jewelry that I like and that I wanted. I don't have anything. But I think the last one that I got was a swatch, actually. Um, but other than like, if I were offered an Hermes Birkin or a Kelly mm -hmm. from the boutique. So bag. So if yeah, for me it would be one. bag. Mm -hmm. Um, and What's it your... would just be that, the a Birkin or a Kelly from the boutique. That's your wish. That would wish be my list. wish list next. So if I could only choose one, I, you know what? Uh, you have wants on both sides. I do. <laughs> I, I have wants on all different sides. <laughs> I'm never satisfied with, well, I am satisfied. I'm, I'm satisfied, but if I see a good deal on something, I'm like, I could use that. I, I love that. I love the look of that. Like, I, I love the look of the Hermes CDC bracelet, and I've been looking at the resale market for that. Mm -hmm. Love that look. Mm -hmm. Just can't get myself to spend $9,000 on a bracelet. That's 10000 but okay. Yes, whatever. <laughs> Um, on the resale market, it's yeah. like double that on the retail market. Right. It's still cheaper, but still a lot for what it is. It's still a lot for what it is. Even right. That so that was the other thing, I guess, in, in, as a comment, side comment to this question, I have much less of a desire for branded, luxury branded jewelry, mm. <laughs> like mm -hmm. Maggie has. Mm -hmm. um, I would rather get a bigger diamond and, you know, it not be branded. I'd rather have from a local jeweler... A bigger stone, a better quality stone. I don't care if it has a whole bunch of pave diamonds in it. But uh, it's got, it's a style. Yeah. It's their style. The yeah. CDC and style. I don't care that much for that style in order to pay up, up that huge it. premium mm -hmm. for that bangle bracelet. I would. Yeah. I'm the opposite. <laughs> so. I Call me a sucker. <laughs> no, I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a, what does your heart want, I guess. Mm -hmm. I want all. <laughs> Okay. Um, uh, let's see. What's my next item in the wish list? I my next item in the wish list is honestly it's the Kelly uh, Kelly twenty five Birkin twenty five and a Constance twenty four the new one with a back pocket. Oh no, and the eighteen. A, oh, and the eighteen <laughs> <laughs> and a Kelly twenty eight. And that's because I have like the classics in the Chanel already, mm -hmm. and I feel like I got the classics in the in the um, Louis Vuitton. Mm -hmm. I have the classic twenty five B twenty five and mm -hmm. uh, maybe Speedy twenty. If they came up with a black handle, 
I love the canvas Speedy mm -hmm. 20. I think it is so cute. Mm -hmm. That's the only one in, and yours. You are that one. That one. The key ball, extra yes, small. that one. I love it. I love that one. But we can't both have the same design. That's yeah, why we look I'm not too getting, close to each other. Yeah, I could just borrow hers. I haven't <laughs> yet. This will never happen, really. <laughs> I will, I will. <laughs> um, but yeah, Speedy 20, but if they come out with a black handle. B. With a strap, not, mm -hmm. not Speedy. Yeah, Speedy B20 mm -hmm. in mono. Jenna. Hi, Jenna. Um, is there a shift to less mainstream looks as a result of life after pandemic? Like buying less and oh wait, stores are more online. So I think what she's asking, is there a shift to non lux items as a result of pandemic? Like is the lux lux item not as desirable? Yeah, not as popular. Is there you think there's a shift? Um, so okay. if it's do I think the the market for lux items is declining, I would say no. Certainly at the high end, I don't think the consumers are as affected by the pandemic or economies or whatever, mm -hmm. um, the recession, all of that stuff, I don't think impacts as much the consumer of those high-end luxury brands. I think there is. I mean, not in the super ultra-rich people, Okay. but there is a lot of upper income, mm -hmm. but not ultra-rich, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm that look at resale market mm -hmm. to purchase or that saves money. But anytime I've ever gone by Louis Vuitton, the store, mm -hmm. there's a line. Yeah, I don't understand. So I, I, you know, I I'm, understand. I'm looking at that and thinking, oh, yeah. the market's still there. There's plenty of people still buying these yeah. luxury brands. Yeah, so the, so the luxury consumer is, is not dying. Luxury no. consumer no, is not No, and if you look at the way. annual reports of these luxury houses, they're making more money than ever. Yeah, I guess you're right. Okay, I'm easily swayed. <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, and look, everybody feels different levels of comfort with their spending. And if your industry or your job was more impacted, I could see people making adjustments, of course. Adriana's Corner, what did you do for a career? I know you've mentioned you went to medical school, but then worked from home. Mm -hmm. So I didn't go to medical school. Um, I did I. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I got my... Doctor of Pharmacy, um, and then I was a, a uh, faculty at a university. Um, and then I did consulting work for a pharmaceutical company um, after I left that job. But then afterwards, I took some time away to raise my kids. And then now I do um, real estate and investment and um, management. So I went to law school, and I was a lawyer, practiced for couple dozen, oh, wow. 20 plus years, yeah, long <laughs> a time. long time. Um, I worked in New York City initially, worked at a huge sweatshop of a law firm. Then I went into... Well, the, it's a big law firm. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah I would say it's sweatshop. Yeah, you worked hard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what other long kind of, hours, long, New long York hours. City huge law firm is anything but that. Yeah. Um, in New York anyway. I mean, I know that in other cities, big law firms can have a good quality of life balance, but I've no, you yet didn't. to you were working over to hear hours. about a quality of life New York City big law firm. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so I did securities initially, some real estate, and then I went into television, media. Um, and I worked in that industry uh, for a variety of different companies, huge companies, um, as a lawyer and then as the business person paired with a lawyer to do deals. And then I left that and I now do consulting uh, so I can work from home, which is great. And I'm very grateful for the fact that I have the flexibility to take deals, work consulting when I want to take those particular projects and not when I don't want to. And I've been in the industry long enough so that my contacts reach out to me when they have work that they think I might be interested in doing. So. You're good I, at your job. You're really good at your job. Um, and then, like Maggie, we do uh, the real estate investment and management together. So. Mm -hmm. It's nice being partners with your sister. <laughs> <laughs> Who's a lawyer? <laughs> uh, Kate. Hi, Maggie and Christina. I know both of you would like to own a Kelly in return. Can you share why you prefer it versus Cellier? What are the pros and cons of the two? Second question. If you have the money now to buy your three dream bags... Will you buy them all at once or save on price increases in the future mm. or wait for special occasions to get it? That's the financially minded person. Yes, very, very. Good job. Yeah. So the reason why I want to return and not a cellier is because I have a cellier. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I love this. It's beautiful. It's structured. It's kind of architectural. So I love the look of this, but it's in box leather. Mm -hmm. And so it's not fragile. I wouldn't say that. It's a heritage leather for Hermes. And, but it is sharp corners. There's no give. So I think a Retorn has much more give. The leathers that it usually comes in are softer. The structure is softer. So I think it's more forgiving. So mm. that's why I would prefer a Retorn the next time around, whether it's a Kelly or a Birkin. So there's your question. There's your answer why you prefer Retorn over the mm -hmm. Celia. I, uh, most of my stuff, I prefer things that are more smushy, more easy, more like mm -hmm. more relaxed. Mm -hmm. That's just more my personality as well. I think I'm less structured in everything I do. <laughs> So I, I like the mushiness of that. So, and it's, mm -hmm. it opens wider because it's softer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I prefer and it that. Holds, it holds more. more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about the three dream bags? If you can buy them all at once or save on price in increase in the future or wait for a special occasions to get it. So my dream bags would be a Kelly and a Birkin and maybe a TPM or an Evelyn, like a small one. So I'm never going to get the chance to buy all three. At the same time, it's just not going to happen. But if it's offered to you at all three, would you buy so all three if, at one time? So if in the imaginary world, mm -hmm. three were offered? Or would you wait and go, you know what, I'm going to do this for my anniversary, this for my... If I was going to get a great price and no, offered No, not great once, price. Offered once? Yeah. So, so, retail so, price offered once. <laughs> so versus so retail... the question is complicated because mm -hmm. if I'm offered once and this offer's never gonna come back again, then yeah, I'm taking it all right now, and this'll be like, you know, buying a house. <laughs> like, I mean, maybe not quite to no, that extent. No, but, but you might be offered again, so would you, you're talking Kelly, but what if, what if it's like, you know, like Chanel Jumbo or something else? Would you take all three bags at one time, or would you take? I don't take... think so, because I think I would rather, for those kinds of big purchases, I'd rather get one and enjoy it, mm -hmm. and really test it out, and try it out, and really love it. I'm not one of those people who can keep buying things and have a collection build up and be able, like, I will never be a person who can point to a bag and say, I've never worn that. Like, not going to happen. If I buy something, I'm going to be wearing, wearing it, it or using it. So, you so would... I don't think I would feel comfortable getting three at once. So you would wait for special occasions? I don't even know if it's special occasions, but I think I would just spread it out. Like, you enjoy all, each one. But you always have special occasions. When you buy something expensive, you're just like, that's for my 50th birthday, which is coming two years from now. <laughs> now all my secrets are out. Um, shh. Uh, <laughs> Your husband doesn't watch, so we're good. <laughs> He's not there. Um, anyway, I would... I usually try to put a reason to a big purchase, yeah. but that's just to, like... You know, Justify make me feel better. less bad about spending that <laughs> kind of money. Less guilty. Yeah. I would have to say, if I saw all three of my dream bags at one time offered, whatever it is, I'll buy it all. Okay. Rather than, because our, we don't really have a special occasion. Like, <laughs> your dog, man. <laughs> Sorry. Special so occasion. we go out to, like, we go on trips or we go on for special occasions. Mm -hmm. Or to just out to dinner, just the mm -hmm. two of us, or go out to see a movie for our special occasions. And then if I want to buy something, I might tack it on as a special occasion kind of a thing. Yeah, we're in Hawaii for X reason. Yeah. And we happen to be at the Cartier or, store and we'll buy two bracelets. Or, or <laughs> I'll just go, you know, I see this really good deal on a Chanel bag, like mm -hmm. the real, real video. And I'll say, oh my, it's my, what was it? Anniversary. anniversary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it didn't have to be my anniversary. Right. If I saw a good deal, I would have just bought it. I like to label it as this was for X. <laughs> I think that's it. Okay. I think that's it. So thank you so much for... If you stuck around this yeah, long, thanks. Yeah, that's a long <laughs> video. So I think this is the longest I've ever done. Thank you so much for asking these questions. These were great questions. If you have any future questions, you can ask in, in the comment section below. And, and if you get enough, I'll do, we'll do another Q&A. Right? That's good. Okay, Thanks thank you. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And if you like this video, please give this a thumbs up. Please don't forget to subscribe. Click the bell notification and... Bell notification and what? Thanks for watching. <laughs> okay, bye.